Hi guys and welcome to this seventh video in the uh, But How Do It Know companion video series. And today we're going to take a little break of the circuits and the bits and the bytes. And uh, we're going to be taking a closer look at the project that I'm going to be building as uh, we keep going along in the book. So when I first read uh, John's book uh, about a year ago, uh, I became really fascinated with it. And in particular with the fact that uh, uh, he was saying that you can build an entire CPU uh, using only NAND gates. And being a software developer uh, by trade, uh, I, I immediately began uh, uh, building uh, some simulations of John's design. So I started out using uh, a computer language that's called Perl that I like to, to use a lot. Uh, it's not really uh, popular these days, but uh, uh, in the past uh, we did a lot of nice things with that. And I wrote a simulator uh, in Perl. It worked quite well, but it was uh, really, really slow. So then I decided to uh, take another crack at it using a new language that I learned called Go. So uh, the Go implementation was uh, much faster, and uh, it was possible to actually write some programs with it that ran in, uh, in a reasonable amount uh, of time. I'm going to put the links down in the description box below uh, to uh, the Git repos where I put all uh, that stuff. Then uh, I started to get an itching to uh, start a, uh, experimenting with uh, more um, projects that were closer to hardware. So I decided to start with something that was maybe in between software and hardware and I decided to uh, write an implementation of John's design uh, on an FPGA. So uh, I bought a small board. I learned uh, about uh, Verilog, which I had never worked with. And I started playing with that. And after uh, a couple of weeks, I got a working implementation of John's design running inside uh, an FPGA. In this case, it was a Basis 3 uh, board. Uh, again, in the description box below, I'll put uh, all the details uh, for the source and uh, uh, of this project. And I've also done some, some videos for that one too, so you might want to look at that. And after I finished playing with the uh, FPGA, I, I, I began thinking maybe it's possible to, to do a project that's using real chips and real hardware. So I never really done much with that. I had just started experimenting with Arduinos and all this electronics uh, trends that are going on these days. And uh, I decided to to uh, become involved in that, learn a bit how uh, working with hardware was, working with, uh, with LEDs, resistors, and all this stuff. And I decided to take a crack at implementing John's design using only uh, or mostly I would say SN74HC uh, gates and what I came up was a project that looked something like this so this is a big mess <laughs> basically of a, of a, of a project um, but that covers most of John's design uh, on the left side you have all the ALU uh, part in the middle you will have more of uh, the control unit and uh, that kind of stuff the clock also and on the right uh, you will have uh, the registers and uh, all the control logic for the registers and the IO uh, controllers and stuff so I had a lot of fun building this this project but it was really big I needed uh, 27 uh, breadboards to do it a whole bunch of wire, a lot of chips. Uh, also, it was quite big. I needed a big table to set it up and, and work with it. I couldn't power it with just uh, my Arduinos because they, they didn't give out enough power, so I need to get an external power supply. So it was really a great learning experience, but I found that 
it was in the end a bit too big to uh, to be able to have fun with. So I set out after that making um, a different design that would be uh, a bit smaller, a lot smaller in fact, and uh, that would be what I call a hybrid design. So the idea would be to get a feel for actually programming uh, this CPU using enough chips and circuitry that you can really get a feel of what's going on and playing with it but at the same time abstracting some of the more uh, of the less interesting circuits maybe I, I could say uh, so that you, know, you don't have so much on, on the board and uh, you don't have so many things to, to take care of so I, I began designing basically a, a layout that came out looking like this so this project is a lot smaller it fits on a uh, a 14 by 10 uh, wooden plank that I that I got it's actually a cutting board and uh, we can build it with a few number of, uh, of uh, breadboards there's some chips in there all the registers are there or most of them so you can kind of still play with it move bits around uh, and bytes around manually if you feel like it uh, you get a feel uh, for touching all the control uh, unit and getting a, a real uh, a, a real fe good feeling of how the the, the control uh, signals go through the CPU and activate all the different parts but it's not big enough uh, to uh, become overwhelming and uh, also to get lost in all the the the, the, the details so I've extracted Quite a bit of it actually so the ALU will be done in, in software using uh, one of the Arduinos uh, the RAM as well uh, obviously uh, building uh, 60, uh, 256 bytes of RAM using chips is not really feasible and uh, using like a RAM chip it's some, it could be done but uh, uh, it has other challenges there that you need to, to take care take care of most RAM chips are clocked and anyways it was uh, it was uh, a bit difficult so I decided to use the Arduino to uh, to uh, implement the RAM as well but a lot of the 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 the, the core of the, the the control unit which is really for me the, the fun part of, of building this the CPU it, it is all there and exposed on, on the board and you can uh, get uh, uh, a really uh, a good feeling of how everything is, is going. Uh, I also decided to uh, replace the point-to-point -point wiring uh, that was in, uh, in in John's book and, and design by uh, a microcode implementation so it makes the, the board a lot cleaner a lot less wires uh, going around and making a big mess in the middle like you could see in my previous picture so uh, so that's something different but we're gonna go into all these changes uh, uh, slowly one at a time and uh, get the get them uh, uh, taken taken care of if you want so uh, so here I have on uh, on uh, my plank here uh, all of what you're gonna need if you want to follow me uh, with uh, this build so uh, I'm gonna put in the description box below a link to uh, a bill of materials type of list that I have compiled that has everything that you need to to build a project uh, we're gonna go to it uh, just briefly now so uh, to start with you're gonna need uh, some kind of surface uh, I use these uh, cutting boards from the dollar store they're 14 by 10 they turn out to be pretty much uh, the right size uh, on which we're going to be uh, gluing our breadboards so to build uh, this design you're going to, you're going to need eight uh, breadboards so I have two uh, two by two here four times so eight and this is going to be uh, the base of our of our design we're then going to need uh, uh, to use uh, four uh, SN7400 chips which are the NAND gates that we've uh, seen previously uh, we're also going to need uh, 
one uh, SN7432 chip, which is um, uh, an OR chip, and one SN7408 chip, which is an AND chip. So we're going to be building a lot of the uh, ANDs and uh, inverters that we need using uh, the actual uh, SN7400 chips. But sometimes uh, it won't make sense and we're a bit cramped for, for space. So uh, we're going to still use uh, some native uh, AND and OR uh, chips, one of each. Then we're going to use seven um, SN74HC273 uh, chips, sorry, so registers, the registers that we saw in um, the previous video. So we're going to need seven of those. Uh, we're going to need a dip switch that's going to allow us to uh, program the computer initially and just send values on the bus and sort of test stuff and make sure everything's working properly. We're going to need a whole bunch of, uh, of uh, LEDs. I'm going to put the exact number in the, in the list below. But uh, basically, if you buy a pack like this of 100 from uh, Amazon or any other distributor, uh, it has usually 20 of uh, five different colors. Uh, it will be fine. You'll have enough to do the whole build. We're going to use uh, Arduino Nanos to uh, control some of the stuff that's going on. So we're going to need four of those. Uh, we're going to be using a, a library that I wrote that will allow basically just one Arduino to use the to, to contain the entire program. Uh, for uh, for the build and the other ones are just going to be uh, basically used to get extra pins so this one or one of these is going to be the master it's going to control the other ones and we will only need to program one of those uh, many times the other ones will program once at the beginning and they'll just respond to commands from this one we'll need uh, one push button uh, this is going to be very useful when we're going to be working with the clock Clock is cool, it runs by itself, but sometimes if you need to debug, you need it to run manually. And this push button will allow us to uh, go uh, slowly, slowly, step by step through the clock and debug our circuit if ever we have to. We're going to need some resistors. Um, I'd say about 60, 60 10K ohm resistors to use as pull down uh, resistors mostly and about uh, 60 uh, 1K um, resistors for uh, all the LEDs that we're going to be using uh, in the build. The LEDs are really there for, for us to see what's going on. It's fun to have lights flashing and to see what values are on the bus, for example, or in the instruction register, or those types of things. Finally, we're going to need some wire. So I'm going to use here uh, some black, some red, blue, yellow, green, orange. Uh, if you have white, brown, whatever colors, I, I would say if you if you can get like the primary colors, let's say uh, let's say black, red, blue, yellow, green, uh, and white, that would be great. Or else you can always use whatever you have lying around. But uh, sometimes it's it's good to use uh, conventions and use uh, certain certain color of wires for certain parts of the circuit and makes it easier to visualize uh, what's happening. Um, so that's pretty much it for the component parts. You're going to need some tools also, uh, some wire strippers, uh, some cutters, and some needle nose pliers here that uh, I use to bend the ends of the, of the wires and put them in the breadboard. So that basically covers all of the material that we're going to need to do this build. So uh, hopefully uh, you feel like uh, joining me and uh, following along. So if so, check, take a look at the bill of materials that I put below. Uh, if you need to buy uh, the electronic components, you can get some of this stuff from Amazon or from wherever, uh, Banggood, whatever. There's also specialized um, distributors like DigiKey or Mauser that you can uh, also uh, use to get most of the stuff that's here. So uh, so uh, I'll be waiting for you in the next video. So uh, order your stuff if you, uh, if you uh, want to join me and uh, we'll be starting uh, in the next video. See you soon.